Shalom, my friends, wonderful to be with you. You know, we should always be thankful for the big things and also for the little things. And like right now, I'm speaking to you and it's a gift of communication and the gift of speech. You know, you can hear the birds, the tweet, the elephants, the trump, and the dogs, the barks, and us who are speaking. So today we are going to speak about words and languages. We have somebody very special in the studio today, and he's Eliezer Ben Yehuda. Eliezer, Hello. Thank you. Thank you to be with us. So Eliezer, thank you for being here. And Eliezer is the grandson of Eliezer Ben Yehuda, which you might know, who was the revivist of the Hebrew language. He's done an amazing work. He was an amazing man. He was a visionary. He was a prophet. He had one vision, is that the Hebrew language will be spoken again in Israel. You, you wrote a very beautiful book. And he came to Jerusalem, specifically. Okay, you're you know, right. And when the Zionist movement started, mm -hmm. people started coming to him because he was the expert on the land, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And every time one of them came and said, you know, we're going to build a big city right next to Jaffa, he said, why? You have a big city here, it's Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And Jerusalem is the heart of Eretz Yisrael, the land of Israel. And if you want to have Eretz Yisrael, then by all means, start in Jerusalem. Everything starts from Jerusalem. And he was- Har HaMoriah, the mountain of Moriah, mm -hmm. and the Abraham, and the mission of Abraham, mm -hmm. and Eliezer's mission was to bring back the concept of God's promise to the descendants of Abraham that to you and to your seed shall I give this land. Which was amazing because we are just reading the portion of Lech Lecha. Mm -hmm. And I was just reading the little passage yesterday when God said, you are going into where I'm going to tell you to go, and there you will be a great nation. You know, in, <laughs> in, in terms of today, mm -hmm. uh, he was a um, uh, man, he was a, a power, God was a power of bringing uh, visitors to this land so that they will fall in love with it. Mm -hmm. And my experience, you know, I've lived in different countries and everywhere I've been, I've told people, you must go to my homeland and you must go to my city, to the city of Jerusalem, because Eliezer ben Yehuda, who did not have the opportunity Yes. To live, uh, to, to be born in this, yes. in this land. He was sad of that. Uh, was, yes, yeah. this was one of the two things that he said he missed. And there was no consolation for it. That he was not born in Jerusalem and that his mother tongue was not Hebrew. And you were born in Jerusalem and, and you my, are speaking Hebrew. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's my mother tongue. Mm -hmm. Of course, my mother came from Metz in France. So really, my mother tongue was French because she was a French woman and she spoke to me in French. And you know that we've spoken in French, you know. Yes. And people say, my goodness, you really, you don't sound like a foreigner. You sound like a French person, you know, when you speak. Well, you know, given my grandfather, it's not surprising that when I talk to French people, I, I sound like a French person. Mm -hmm. And then when I talk to... English-speaking people, I sound like a native of some <laughs> land where this language was spoken. And of course, when I grew up, you know, the British were in the, in the land here. Mm -hmm. So it was a kind of a mother tongue for me. But of course, my real mother tongue is Hebrew. Is Hebrew. Mm -hmm. The she, tongue. That's it, the tongue. As the, as the good book says, Safa Brura. Brura means easy to recognize. Okay. You know, when something is real clear, you say, the ah, okay, okay. You know, it doesn't have to be spoken even, you know. You look at, you look at the east here, towards Jerusalem, the mm -hmm. 
It's, it's natural. It's because when you use, like very often we can see with the name in Hebrew, mm -hmm. is not a concept, the name. The name will carry what is the thing. Like table in English doesn't mean, it doesn't have a signification. Mm -hmm. But like shulchan in, in uh, Hebrew, Hebrew is like from sholeach, isn't it? Like you are bringing the people and mm -hmm. they are going. So there is So the table is this place where people come, they are together, they are conversing, they, something is happening, and after they are strong again. You really have to watch out, Natalie, because your, your mind is becoming Hebrew. I know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know, but this is the beauty. Yeah. This That's is the, the beauty, beauty of the language, yes. And, and I think, because again, reading the book, I could see, oh, it was a book in French about Eliezer Be Ben mm -hmm. Yehuda, I was reading that this during the summer. And inside of this book, you could see, because I didn't read it in other books, that Eliezer knew that he wanted this, I mean, God gave him really this, the, wanted him Absolutely. to understand that this is the language for Israel. But he was saying, but then when it will be established there, it will be also for the nations. Mm -hmm. And I think we're coming at this time there is a lot of people now who wants to learn Hebrew, who are learning Hebrew, who are thinking of learning Hebrew. Please, people, if you have that, just think and just start because it's not always easy. But it's like you will understand more the, the Torah, the Word of God, and it's like giving you an understanding of life. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. So it's what you say. Yes, but you know, I've it's very interesting because we've known one another for a number of years mm -hmm. and we've talked about Eliezer Ben Yehuda for a number of years and yet we never uh, end the story no. and we are never bored mm -hmm. speaking about Eliezer Ben Yehuda. And I'm going to tell you something very interesting to me anyhow. I've written his story in English uh, first because I wrote the book originally in Hebrew and I couldn't find a publisher mm -hmm. way back. And so I wrote it in English because I was living in the United States. Uh, I was a rabbi and I was a teacher and I was a uh, publicist for uh, Tzionut, for Zionism. And so I wrote this book, and I wrote it for non-Jews, really. And I explained in this book about Eliezer and about the power that drove him mm -hmm. to do what he did. And then, all of a sudden, God opened the door for the Hebrew book. And the publisher said to me, give me the uh, text, and I will publish the book. And I looked at the text that I had because it was one of the first things that I had done on a computer in Hebrew. And I said, no, you know, this is not the right story to tell here in Hebrew. Mm. And I rewrote it and I did it very differently. It's written for Hebrew and it's written for the Hebrew people which of course is the Jewish people living and speaking the language mm -hmm. of Father Abraham and the language in which God introduced himself to mankind. And in writing it, I discovered something else. And I discovered that Eliezer ben Yehuda was blessed by God with love. Mm -hmm with the physical love and his teacher for languages was a young woman who became his first wife. Mm -hmm. First wife because she died eventually and he had to have another wife. Deborah. So Deborah, yes, Dvorah mm -hmm. was the first wife, the daughter of a wonderful family Jonas, Jonas, mm -hmm. and after being with him for 10 years and loving him no end in poverty, 
and in subjugation and in much trouble. Mm -hmm. And life was not so easy. No, in no, exactly. That That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, this yeah. is the the subjugation mm -hmm. to poverty. Mm -hmm. You see, but she loved him with all her heart. And then, when she knew that she was dying, she invited her sister. Yes. who was more than 20 years younger than she, to come and to be his wife. Princess. She, said to, she sent her a letter saying, if you want to be a princess, come to Jerusalem and marry my prince. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is such a, an amazing manifestation of love. And then came the second woman, who was a college girl in Moscow, mm -hmm. a modern woman, a feminist of the first degree, and she committed herself to her husband and lived through a very difficult 30 years with him. And when, did he, when and he they died, lost, they lost she children. continued to love him for another 30 years before she joined him and her sister. Mm. And it's a, it's a love story. It is, it is. You see, it of is. the two women. I, know. I was looking, and I w sorry, I'm, I will say yes. again, please, you know, you can buy this, this book on Amazon and you have all the story, the drama, the beautiful things that happen, it's like up and down all the time. It's, it's just amazing. And, in it, I remember the story of Polly. Uh, she was called um, the Pola. Pola mm -hmm. at the beginning, and she was looking at this man with this little, uh, I mean, young. He was young at that time. Eliezer mm -hmm. Ben Yehuda was a yeshiva student. And, and he, he was a redhead. Little, and, it, yes. and so was her sister. You know, and the two of them used to sit. The father was very well to do. Mm -hmm. And so he had a library, which was very rare back in those days. And in the library, there were uh, bookcases on the wall, and there was a window. And next to the window, there was a table. And Eliezer and Dvorah used to sit across from one another at the table. And she would teach him languages, because he spoke Hebrew and Yiddish, which was the language of the Jews in that land in Eastern Europe. So. You know, he comes and he looks at the library and he opens a book and he can't read it. And he opens another one and he can't read it. Some of them were in German, some of them were in French, some of them were in Russian. He didn't even know the language of, of his own country where he was living. Yeah, you people know? don't realize. It's like it was a ghetto. Oh, I yeah. mean, they were living in ghetto. In it a ghetto yet. that they wanted. Mm -hmm. It was a self-denial of the neighborhood around them. They just wanted to be among themselves. And so they were there. And of course, you know, in a good family, you don't leave a young man and a young woman alone. You have to have ah, what? Somebody else, a chaperone. To, a chaperone. <laughs> and so there was a two-year-old chaperone. <laughs> and it was this little girl, oh. Paula. And... Uh, she used to look at them, you know, and they were with their red hair mm -hmm. in the window, by the window, and the sun used to shine in the morning. The window was facing east, mm -hmm. and the sun used to shine, and they both looked like they had a halo mm -hmm. on their head. Mm -hmm. And so she's looking at them. They are like part of mythology, you know. Mm -hmm. And she fell in love with her sister, and she fell in love with the man, you know. Mm -hmm. And they fell in love with one another, too, because they were young and because actually the father brought him home mm -hmm. to make a shidduch, you know, to make a matching between his daughter and a man that, was, that the father thought would be a good man for mm -hmm. her to Which was amazing. be married to. Which was an amazing story again, because at that time, Eliezer, his uncle said to him, OK, you have to sort out yourself. And he arrived in the night. 
he to school, he goes in the synagogue, Absolutely. he goes to sleep. I mean, yeah. it's like when you see all this drama in his life, that's it. This, his life was ending, and suddenly, no, this man Jonas, which was his mm -hmm. father-in-law later on, Mm -hmm. it's, it's just amazing all this drama you know in the in the film please look look at this this book fulfill, fulfillment of prophecy because it, it gives you the story of Eliezer ben Yehuda but like for for us I would say again as he so he touched all the Jewish people yes he and this is Israel. why I called it yeah. fulfillment of prophecy but now I can see something happening it happens already in my life he's like uh, awakening about the Hebrew language and I was looking in this book again you wrote to Martin for his 48th birthday and this was exactly 10 years ago now also I wanted to speak about you know like we speak about Zephaniah 3 9 mm -hmm. and the, the beautiful thing I think again that Eliezer could see is that in Israel they needed to have a common language because people don't realize they were speaking Yiddish, uh, German, French, Russian, Italian. Uh, Itali I mean, like all the languages, uh, uh, not uh, Hebrew, uh, all the communities. And, you know, they lived in little sections of town yeah. in the same town. They didn't know one another because, mm -hmm. you know, the, the people, the French people only got together with other French people the Germans with the Germans, the Italians with the Italians, etc., etc., etc. And the Sephardic and the Ashkenazi couldn't even understand each other. You know, but that, this is very true. But you have to understand, most people don't know the difference. Most people, non-Jews, mm -hmm. that true. watch this program, mm -hmm. they think a, a Jew is a Jew is a Jew, mm -hmm. and it's not so. Mm -hmm. The Jew who comes from Eastern Europe thinks that he is alone in the world. The Jew who came from Morocco thought that he was the only one that's Jewish. You know, when the Zionist movement started, they didn't bother inviting half the Jews of the world to join this movement. So it was in... Bas but because they didn't know. Mm -hmm. They didn't know there were other Jews. My grandfather came to Paris to go to university and became very sick with tuberculosis. And the doctors told him, you're going to die. Prepare yourself, you're going to die. You're not going to celebrate another birthday. And you know, if he had not had Dvorah at his side, he may not have survived another birthday. But she came to him. He gave her up. Yes. She was his childhood sweetheart. Mm -hmm. And when he was uh, uh, analyzed to have tuberculosis, he said, he sent a letter to the father and said, please break the news kindly to your daughter that I'm not going to be among the living very long and that she should find another man. And she said, no, no, you no. Know? And, no. And in a very, very powerful uh, pa part of the book, mm -hmm. I speak about the event that took place between mother, between father and daughter. Yes. You know, how he was telling her that your romance is over, and she said to him, no, it's not. <laughs> You're not reading the book, the letter right. The letter from Eliezer is a, he's, a, he's calling me. He's saying the words, but he's calling me. He mm -hmm. wants me, he needs me. And I will cure him. Oh, I didn't know that it was so strong. Wow. Yes. And he said, the father said, no, you don't understand. He's dying. He won't be around in another year. And she said, no, he will. Because I will cure him and I will marry him. And we are going to have a happy life together. Oh, it's amazing. And so they had 10 years before she contracted his disease and died from it. And she told him, don't you ever feel sorry for me, she told her husband. Mm -hmm. you know. And then she tells her sister, who is a young innocent, but she knew that she loved him. Mm. You wow. See? I didn't so, know this inside. It's story. a romance. It's wow. a, yes, it's very wow. romantic. This is amazing. This is amazing.
This is amazing. And each one of them, they were both amazing women. Mm -hmm. They were both amazing women. But you see, Dvorah was the love of one's youth. You know, like the words of Jeremiah. I remember, I will always remember the love of your youth, the fact that you went after me into a desert, a land un, unknown. And that's exactly what, what she did. You see, those words were written for her. And that's what, you know, he, he had the newspaper mm -hmm. in Jerusalem. And after her death, that was, those were the words they that he put in the newspaper mm -hmm. when she died. To, to remember her. That's how he, you know, mm -hmm. thought about her. And he thought that his life is over. Maybe. That's how much he loved her. And this little girl, Paula, forced herself upon him. Absolutely forced herself upon him. I know, because he him. said again, he, it's not possible. No, you are going to exactly. have a hard life. And she said, no, I'm coming. <laughs> and she again. said, no, listen, if you don't want to marry me, that's OK. But I'm coming to Jerusalem. And this will be the new scandal of Jerusalem. So you know, you don't want to marry me, that's OK. But I'm coming. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't speaking Hebrew at the time. Again, right. she but has she to learned. Learn. She learned Hebrew. She yeah. prepared herself. Mm -hmm. I know there is a beautiful passage. So when she's in, a, they go to a settlement, a colony, mm -hmm. and they are speaking, and she's speaking Hebrew to the people, mm -hmm. and the little children are speaking Hebrew. But the ma the mothers are too busy, and so they don't speak very good. Hebrew, but she speak Hebrew to them. And, oh, yes. And show yes. and... And yeah. she, you know, Dvora never became very fluent in Hebrew. Okay, no, I didn't know that. You see, because she was too busy in the battle for survival. Mm -hmm. You see, but Chemda, you know, was a horse of a different color, as the saying goes, you see. And she became fluent and she became an author. Yes, she was you know, writing the newspaper. She wrote in the newspaper. He created the word for fashion so that there'll be a fashion part of the newspaper. She was a feminist, but the, the yes, right she way. Yes, she was, like with a, a capital F. Yes, you know? exactly, the right absolutely, way. Absolutely, absolutely. You can have dreams and you can Ab be a woman. I, listen, I was her grandson, and, 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 and she thought I was her slave, her young slave, you know. But she loved him mm -hmm. without reservation. This is beautiful. Totally. So I'm going to say, you're right, you're right. In the midst of all of that, I think I, we, we already spoke about that a bit in, mm -hmm. the, in the program, but I really think that, like, we've been now here for 10 years, which is amazing in, in this land, and I saw a great change. There is more relationship with Jewish and Christian. There is really a respect, like there is a group of people who are really working together. And like, we see more and more that people want to speak more Hebrew. And I really think like, like I want, really wanted to do a program again with you thinking, okay, this is, we are coming in a new era. And like we can see that there is an awakening mm -hmm. that's happening in the nations, that now Israel is strong. The Hebrew language is like beautiful. A lot of people are doing poetry, you know, is used in every, um, every area, scientific and, you know, everywhere they, they are making some new names, new words. But now there is, and I would say speci maybe especially with the Christian, they are discovering, oh, you know what? The word of God was written in Hebrew, not in Greek. And this is so important. I, exactly. And I was in a university in uh, Missouri mm -hmm. and a Christian one, which is amazing because for French people, a university, you know, uh, a Christian university is just amazing. And they just received a month ago a Torah 
an old Torah who is from Poland and it's not kosher anymore to be used because it's been damaged and all of that. So they give it to them. And, you know, is making a buzz in that university. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was like, we spoke together. I don't mm -hmm. know if you remember saying, you know, like Hebrew should be in, in Bible colleges and very often is Absolutely. Greek. And now we can and not only that, but Bible colleges. And I've been, you know, I've been involved in Jewish Christian relations from the from day one when I left Israel. I went to Europe first, and then I went to the United States, you know. And I kept telling everybody, you know, if you want to understand the word of God, you have to have a Jew yeah. give you not only the words but the sentiment, mm -hmm. you know, the spirit of, of Torah, you know, to the Jews, the Torah is a living thing. It is. This is why we use the scroll. You know, the, the reason that we use the scroll yes. is because everything is organic, you see. And when you read it out of a book, especially translated, is, you know, uh, like making love in long, with using long distance telephone calls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not She's the real not, thing. No. And I it's know. not going to have children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. You know, this is, this is the thing. It's like now, it's like when the Christian world say Bible is the word of God, is Torah, is instruction, is teaching. And like there is an awakening that's happening and we're so happy. Um, we're already out of time. Can you believe that? I cannot believe it. We are <laughs> never out of time. <laughs> Eliezer, thank you again for coming and speaking about your granddad. Thank you that you are linked with him and with us and what's happening all around the world. Friends, I hope that you really enjoy this program. Don't forget to go on our website. You can also watch on YouTube whenever you want. And you can also tell your friends. And from Eliezer and from me, See you and shalom, shalom.